All right, hello and welcome to the programming lecture for the week. I have some fun stuff for you today because we're going to make a game, all right, at the very end at least. So let's get started uh, with this fancy thing called loops. Okay, so I talked about them a little bit last time, sorry. Uh, and the idea is we want programs that can go back on themselves, okay? So like we're running some blocks they run in this order, and then they go back, and they run some more. The same ones, okay? That's what a loop is. You just loop around and around and around. Eventually you'll stop, of course. But, yeah, in Scratch it looks more like this, doesn't it? It's something like, uh, I don't know, repeat n or something. So you can pick the n, like how many times do you want the blocks inside to repeat? You can also make it forever as well. Uh, but the idea is you can put whatever you want in here and it's called the body of the loop and the body gets repeated n times. Okay, not too bad. And you can also have a forever loop that re gets repeated forever. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad and is starting to make a little bit of sense at least. So yeah, a loop, uh, maybe I should make it in bold because it's a new key term. It's just a type of block that keeps getting run, okay? As much as you want it to run, it will run. So you can specify an n for how many times or you can make it run forever. So you can make your forever loop and it looks more like this, See? forever. And so it's gonna run this, all the blocks inside of here forever keeps running forever. Okay, that is what a loop does. It's wonderful, wonderful. And yeah, so the inside, all the stuff, all the blocks that make up the loop, uh, it's called the body. And that body is what repeatedly runs. It keeps on getting uh, come back to, okay? That's the, uh, that's the whole point. And every time it goes and it runs all the blocks in the body to completion, that's called an iteration, okay? So we say that loops iterate. That's, that's a common term that you'll probably hear me say from the, for the rest of the class. Uh, and there's also one other useful kind of loop block that is called a repeat until block, and it's going to keep repeating until a certain Boolean condition becomes true. So now, you see how we're combining the stuff we're learning in the non-programming lecture and the programming lectures. Okay, so all the Boolean stuff that we just learned will come quite a bit in handy for uh, all the stuff that we're gonna program. So repeat and tell. And then you have this shape of a block, uh, which takes some sort of Boolean condition, or maybe I should say a predicate. So that's your condition, and uh, you just repeat your body until the condition becomes true. But, as I'm sure you're thinking, that is enough writing. Show me what this means. And, oh, am I ready for you? I have an example of the Scratch Cat bouncing forever and ever. So, here we go. All right, to close that, we have our scratch cat. Let's give him his real name. Let's give him some nice, beautiful surprise background. Looks good to me. Uh, and now, so I want him to bounce around. Maybe he can start off in that direction or something. I want the scratch cat to forever do something. Okay, so once the program starts, I want my scratch cat to do something different. All right. I want him to do the same thing, in fact, forever. So forever block means the body gets uh, executed forever. Until the end of time. All right, I'll put that up there. And so now I'm gonna put stuff in here that makes the scratch cat move and bounce. So. That's up here in motion. So, 
a nice one is move 10 steps in whatever your current direction is. That's quite nice. And if I just run this, the scratch cat is going to keep moving 10 steps every time the block gets executed. It's going to keep going back and forth and back and forth. So I'm going to run this now. So think about what should happen. And then let's see if your guess was correct. I'm going to click go. Whee! And he's kind of stuck now up in the upper left corner. You can't really see him. Uh, we can bring him down, though. Zero, zero. Okay. We don't want him to get stuck. We want him to hit the wall and bounce off. Okay. That's the idea. Just keep on bouncing around. Like Pong. All right. So there is a nice block that says, if on edge bounce. Ho, ho, ho. And that's exactly what we need here. So we're going to move a little bit. And if we actually hit the edge, uh, either before we move or while we're moving, the Scratch Cat's going to bounce off of that wall. And so uh, that'll make it so that he does not get stuck anywhere. He'll start going off in the opposite direction. OK, so with these two blocks, just forever repeat the following. Move a little bit, 10 steps. See, this is one. This is one, 10 steps. It just keeps on doing this, 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 and it becomes animated, All right? Uh, and then coupled with if on edge bounce, well, there's nothing happening there because he's not on the edge. Maybe if I put him on the edge, bounce. See, he bounced. Isn't that cool? So it'll just do it, All right? So let's start him off in a nice direction and uh, parallel with this rock formation. And let's, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to click this, and now let's watch him have fun. Whee! So there goes the Scratch Cat. And he's just going to keep bouncing until we click the stop button for the program because this, this program is supposed to never stop. It just forever does the same thing until the end of time. Okay, isn't that fun? And then you can play around with the direction and that will, of course, change how he bounces. He almost got the perfect corner there. And I guess if you were, uh, if you were no fun, you could put him right at 90 or positive 90, please. Put him right at 90, and I think he'd just go left and right at that point, because, wee, there he goes. So, completely up to you, but I like him going on all the axes. Okay, so that is a forever loop. Not too bad, hopefully fun, and I encourage you to play around with this. Okay, ooh, it looks like he's hitting the perfect corner there for a second. Okay, so that's, that's one program. We got plenty more today, don't you worry. So that's the first example of a loop. It just keeps on running the same code forever and ever. Let's do something more complicated. Let's let's put let's involve variables now. All right. So what I would like to do is I would like to write a program that sums the numbers from one to ten. Okay. This is useful because we often write programs that do numerical things. Like just think of all the numerical things that your bank website does or something like that. All right, so I want to sum all the numbers from 1 to 10 and then maybe print back out that number. Okay, so the idea is I need to do some work. I need to add 1, then I need to add 2 to 1, then I need to add 3 to 3, etc. And I need somewhere to put all of that work until I'm done with it. So that means that should scream in your mind. All right, I need a variable. Okay, so let's make one. Let's make a sum variable. And the idea is we need to start it off at zero so that when we add stuff into it, it doesn't like do silly things. Because if I started sum at 42, obviously adding one in all the way to 10 is gonna give me the wrong answer, right? So let's start it at zero. So whatever I put in it is just, is just that and nothing else. Okay, so we're gonna have the sum and it's gonna start at zero. And then what I'd like to do is keep on adding things. First add one into the sum variable, then two all the way to adding 10. So the first time I'm going to add one to sum, okay, that makes it one in total. Then I'm gonna add two to sum, okay, that makes it three in total. Then I'm gonna add three into sum, okay, that makes it six in total. And you're gonna keep on going. But notice, notice what we're doing here. Oh, ho, ho. we have a bunch of things that are essentially the same sentence, just something little has changed. So these bullets are repetitive. That should mean, okay, let's, let's try and make a loop out of that. 
So you should think loop whenever you see repetition, okay? Uh, what I would like to do is have a loop that loops 10 times, maybe. Repeat 10. Uh, keep on adding things into sum. That's, that's the goal, okay? And we actually need one more variable to keep track of what we're adding so that the body of our loop can always be the same. It's just add that variable into sum. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works, so don't, don't worry if you're not completely following me just yet. So here is my next variable. I'll call it like to add. So that'll hold the number that I'm about to add into the sum variable. And we'll start it off at 1. Okay, so let me show you why this is useful. Why this is a nice little pattern. Okay, this pattern will uh, stay with you for the entirety of your computer science slash programming career. All right, so start sum off at a nice initial value, and then we're going to keep on adding into sum whatever to add is. Okay, so the first time to add is one, we're going to add in one to sum. Then we're going to increment to add so that it next adds two into sum. You see that? That's beautiful. We'll just keep on using this value. And so we'll add two into sum. Ah, well, that takes the one and makes three out of it. And then we're going to make two add become three. So that then we can add the three into the sum. And so that makes two add, uh, that makes sum become six. Then it's four, then it becomes ten, because we keep on putting that inside of sum, adding it to whatever was already there. Okay? So it just keeps on putting these numbers there, and eventually we're building up to the right answer. Dot, dot, dot. And so that's, that's the game plan. So we're going to have two variables, sum and to add, I will call it. Uh, and then we're going to have a loop that keeps on adding things. And we're going to print our sum after we're done, because that's the, that's the answer we finally wanted, whatever 1 to 10 sum together is. I know there's a formula for it, but this is more general than that. It's just a good example. Okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? So here's what I'm going to do, and then we're going to talk about exactly why it works again. All right? Here we go. I guess I will just make a new tab because that's easier for me. I don't have to worry about saving this, do I? I want to stay on the page, yes. And let's see. Can I just say File New, Go to New Tab? No, it's not happy about that. OK. Boop. There we go. We're ready now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable, two variables, in fact. The first one is going to be called sum. The next one is going to be called to add. For all sprites is fun, because we're not even going to have any other sprites at the moment. Uh, if I click these check marks, it shows what their values are. Uh, so here's sum, here's to add. And so here's my program. At the very start, oops. At the very start, our program is going to do what? We're just going to follow this. We're going to start sum off at zero because we want to add stuff into it. Okay, let's go do that. Sum needs to become zero, no matter what. Whenever we start, sum must become zero. There's a nice block for that. Hey. Alright, so sum starts at zero. And you could change this between any of the variables. So that's the first thing. And then we need to repeatedly add a number into sum. Ho ho ho. There, that's where our loop comes into hand, comes into play. So repeat how many times for well, it must be 10 times, right? Because we want to add in 10 things. So here we go. Uh, in between there, we should also probably set to add to be 1. So we started off at the right number because we want to first add in the 1. OK. And then repeatedly, 10 times, we'll do the following. We're going to add whatever to add is into sum. Let's do that. So we're going to uh, set sum to be whatever the addition of sum and to add are. Okay, that's the idea. So put whatever was in sum back in sum, and then also add the to add variables value. Okay, I'm going to walk through, I'm going to take a screenshot of this in a second after I show you it working, and we'll talk about just why it works. So don't worry if it's, if it's a little too complicated at the moment. We will make this make sense, I promise. 
All right, so that's the first thing. And then after we've added in this value, we need to change to add so that it has uh, the value that it's going to next add in the next body of the loop. Okay, let's change to add by one, that increments it. You could also say set to add to, to add plus one if you would like, but this also works. So in order, sum becomes zero, to add becomes one, and then repeatedly, sum gets whatever sum plus to add was, starts out being one, because zero and one, then to add becomes two, sum then and we go back up to this, sum becomes, okay, whatever it was, one plus to add, which is now two, hey, it's making progress. And so after it's looped 10 times, we have come up with an answer. So let's, uh, let's print out that answer. So we'll say sum for two seconds or something, or we could actually just say show variable sum. That's probably easier. Let's delete that. Are you ready? I wonder if we can show both at the same time, show to add and also sum, because what do you think to add is at the very end? Try and take a guess for what it should be, because that's also uh, enlightening, I think. So here is my entire code, I think. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey, it does show both. All right, so after 10 times, we also added one to to add at the very end. So to add ends up being 11, even though we only used it from one to 10. So out here, once it's all done, to add is 11, sum is 55, because that's the sum from of all the numbers between one and 10. Okay, well, wasn't that fun? So this is our program and let me copy it here. Let's draw exactly how it's working. All right, so here we go. We have two variables. We have sum and we have to add. And all this is doing is executing code in a certain order. So first we do this, then we do this, and then we do these two until the end of 10 tries, okay? We do them 10 times in total. Come back and come back and come back and do these two again, do these two again. And then finally, once the 10 tries are up, we go down here and execute these two blocks, all right? So this stuff, these two lines, they get executed 10 times. 10 times. So at the beginning, set sum to be zero. Zero, done. Set two add to be one. One, done. All right, so 10 times, set sum to be whatever sum was, zero, plus uh, to add, okay, that's in total one, so sum becomes one. And then we change to add, oops, did I, yeah, one, <laughs> change to add by one, okay, now it becomes two. And we're gonna do this 10 times, so, okay, we're back here now. We're on our second iteration of the loop body. All these terms are coming to us. So the first thing we'll do is set sum to be whatever sum plus two add is, one plus two is three, sum becomes three. To add gets changed by one, incremented by one, it becomes also three. Okay, and now we're back here for our second iteration of the loop, right? Or third, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready. So set sum to be whatever sum plus two add is, well, it's six, so sum becomes six. Change to add by one, becomes four. And I think you can see it's gonna keep on going until we hit 10 and uh, the value is 45 because we haven't added the 10 yet. So this is my last, the 10th iteration of the loop. We set sum to be whatever it is, plus to add. Bam, it's 55 now. So we have the final answer. And then, oops, I forgot to erase that. Then we have change to add by one again. We still do it, okay? Even though we're about to finish, we still do it. This becomes 11. And so this is why we do it like that, okay? So, uh, yeah, it stops. It stops when it's just a little bit bigger, okay? Uh, so uh, you can think of a proposition that you can write to describe what's happening here. And one of them is, okay, the loop actually stops 
when to add is greater than n. Isn't that interesting? So you can use like a repeat until if you would like, and it'll do the same thing. So uh, I think that's probably enough, uh, enough for that. And we might come back though. Okay, so that is fun little loopy things. And let us now use ifs some more, use conditions some more. So here is my uh, fun example of combining loops, combining uh, these if-else blocks that we now know and love. So I'm going to make a program uh, with the theme, Do You Believe in Ghosts? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to first ask the user, hey, do you believe in ghosts? All right, that's the first thing we'll do. And if they do, we will set a variable. We'll call it should show ghosts, OK? We'll set it to 1 if they would like to, if they believe in ghosts, all right? So here's our variable, should show ghosts. And if it just so happens to get set to 1 based on the user's input, uh, we're going to do some cool stuff. If they don't, we'll set it to 0 otherwise. And we will summon our ghosts depending on the value of should show ghosts. All right, Because our little ghosts, which are sprites, they will be running their own forever loop programs that will be watching for that variable to change. OK? And so uh, whether or not they're hidden or shown depends on this variable. So that's fun. OK. Let's see here. Boop. And boop, 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 boop. All right, so let's, let's set the mood. We need a spooky backdrop. Is there like a woods somewhere? Yes, there is. All right, we need some spooky ghosts now. So let's find them. What do we got at our disposal here? You know, we have letters. Those are not the most useful. There's a skeleton. I'm all about the skeleton. Uh, what else? Oh, there's a bat. Yes, yes, please. Maybe one more. Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? I'm not seeing anything scary jumping out at me just yet. Feel free to fast forward while I find something good. Maybe I can search for Halloween. There's a witch. That might work. Witch and wizard. Let me search for Halloween. Oh, okay, cool. There's a real ghost. That works. That works perfectly. Okay. So let's put these all around the scratch cat. They're supposed to start out hidden, is the idea. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? So, dun dun dun. What we're going to do is we're going to ask the user, hey, do you believe in ghosts? And we'll do that on the scratch cat. Remember, each sprite gets their own different program. So we will do this on the scratch cat. So uh, whenever the green flag is clicked, we are going to ask the user, do you believe in ghosts? And so they'll type either yes or no, and that will be stored into answer, right? See, now there's its value. So if it's yes, we're going to set our variable to 1. Otherwise, we'll set it to 0, and it's called should show ghosts. OK? That's a very common thing to do. When there's multiple words in a variable, you put underscores. OK. So now we have should show ghosts. And uh, we're going to set that to 1 or 0, depending on what the user types into us. OK, so if, see, we can go very easily from code, or sorry, we can go very easily from words to code. If these are typed in, yes, we need to say yes. We, we want to show the ghost. Should show ghost should be 1. Otherwise, if they typed no, we'll set it to 0. So we need to change this 
using an operator that returns true or false. So is it's set to a certain value. Okay. Where is my equal to block? Oh, there it is. I was looking so so hard for it. Okay, so if the answer was yes, then we'll set the should, should show ghosts to one. Otherwise, we'll set should show ghosts to zero. Okay, so here is our here's our variable. We can just watch it. So I'm going to click the green flag. And so do you believe in ghosts? Yes. Hit enter. And it set it to one. If I type anything other than yes, no included, it is now zero. Okay. And before we give programs to these individual sprites, uh, I'd like to make sure that these things, these little ghosts, start out hidden. And the way we do that is because all of these things are watching this variable, this should show ghosts variable. If we start it out as zero, then they will start out as hidden. Yeah. So that'll make sure they start out as hidden. All right. So uh, I think now we're ready to write programs for these different sprites. All right, so again, they can each run their own. So when the green flag gets clicked, it'll run a program here. It can run a program here uh, and here and here. So when the green flag gets clicked, we're going to have four different programs running at the same time, which is interesting to think about. So uh, what we would like to do is have an if then else. All right, so we'll do something like if we are uh, if should show ghosts is set to one, we shall show ourselves. Okay. Looks. Otherwise, we shall hide ourselves. And the issue is, should show ghosts can change. So we would like to put this in a forever loop so that the ghost keeps watching this variable. That's the idea. Just keep on trying this if block, if else block. So what well, all we have to do now is put this in a forever loop and it'll just keep on watching the variable. Okay, so forever. Forever watch the should show ghosts variable. Okay. And show yourself if it ever happens to be equal to one. Otherwise, keep hiding yourself. Stay hidden. Okay, so let's let's try this. Let's try running it. Are you ready? Do you believe in ghosts? He starts out hidden. No, he stays hidden. Stop. Go. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. He starts out hidden. He becomes visible. Beautiful. He has shown himself to us. All right. So that's that's it. I'm just going to give the same program to the other two sprites, the other two ghosts, and we'll call it a day. All right. So they all, these three ghosts, have the same program. They're going to run the same program when the green flag gets clicked for them. They're going to keep on forever looking at this should show ghost variable. If it ever hits one, show themselves. Otherwise, they'll stay hidden. All right? So, and just by virtue of setting this should show ghost variable, uh, they'll initially start out hidden and eventually they might become shown. Okay, I hope you see how this is all like a, a very nice concerted action. They're all working together, all these little programs. So if I say yes, they appear. If I say no, they stay hidden. Okay? And so stop the program, rerun it. Yes, we believe in ghosts. Isn't that fun? Okay? So that's that's a really neat example of loops, which are new, and if else statements, which we now know and love. Okay, and we're having little Boolean conditions inside of here that return true or false. Like the answer, it really was yes. If I click it, it was true. That does the body of the if. Otherwise, if it was false, it'll do the body of the else. So that's a fun little example. And now uh, I want to, yeah, I want to explain it a little bit more and then then we'll, we'll have a fun example. All right, so whenever we enter our answer to the scratch cat, the answer variable gets changed. Maybe I shouldn't say that I change it. Then I'll use that value to uh, 
change the value of the should show ghost variable using an if block and each ghost just keeps on checking that should show ghost variable so that's like a, a wordy example a wordy comment of how the program works okay so it's a fun little program and I have one more for you and this will lead into your next programming assignment so you may have played a game like Super Mario or something where you're jumping up and down and you're doing cool stuff you're running around so that is uh, called a platformer so that's that's the technical term because like you're jumping on things like here is your ground you've got a platform uh, that you can jump on even up here you can jump uh, and then you can interact with the environment go left and right so usually there's no like 3d it's always 2d for a platformer game uh, but yeah that's now you know what it's called and we're gonna make one okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to figure out how to move horizontally jump and interact so we've got our little character on a given platform eventually you can be on another if you wanted to uh, and yeah just like in Super Mario you can have things that you can jump up and hit and and get okay and this character should be able to jump and then move left and right how in the world shall we, how are we gonna do this uh, well let's let's first handle jumping so let's maybe make the jump happen on the space key and we'll have our scratch cat be our character of course so whenever we jump an easy way to do that is to increase the scratch the scratch cat's y value okay by a large amount because that's going straight up okay no matter no matter the current direction of the scratch cat he's going up when we change his y value in a positive way okay and then we can bring him down slowly until he touches the ground so there's a lot going on there uh, let's pick it apart so let's let's bring in some uh, some features let's have uh, a ground first of all I think I will use uh, a line works also paddle works how about a line got a little line for us that'll be our ground oops okay there's our ground and our scratch cat should probably eventually start on the ground close to it at least and then let's have something uh, that the scratch cat will eventually jump up to get let's have him collect fish because that's cute right so maybe he'll gain a point every time he he touches a fish let's bring a fish into our game he he uh, very nice so here's our scratch cat, here's a fish, maybe it can be a smaller size or something, I don't know. Like a coin, or it can be huge, I don't know, 80. It's a normal size fish, I guess. Uh, we can add a backdrop if we really wanted to. Oh, that was random and that was perfect. Did you see that? Oh yes, okay. It's uh, a good day. Alright, so what's going to happen is, I always want to give him a real name, scratch. let's handle the jumping so events uh, not when the green flag gets clicked but when space gets pressed let us make the scratch cat jump up and the way you can do that is through motion we will change the Y by a certain amount so like I don't know by 100 let's try that whenever we press the space key let's change the Y of the scratch cat by 100 so I'm about to press the space key we is that a good enough jump maybe you can jump higher let's put him back down about 150. What is that? Does that work for you, Scratch Cat? Yeah, that'll hit the fish. Alright, uh, the issue now is he doesn't come back down. And if I press space again, oh, there he goes off the screen. So that's no fun. So after he jumps up, he needs to fall down because gravity's a thing, right? So we'll bring him down slowly until he touches the ground. And we can do this with a loop. Alright. So, uh, let's bring him down. Control, uh, and we're gonna do this. Repeat until, isn't this nice? Repeat until the scratch cat touches something. So now we're in, we're in a new place. This is a new uh, predicate. Is the scratch cat touching the line, which is the ground, this red thing? Is the scratch cat currently touching the line? He's a little bit above it, it's false. Is he now touching it? True. 
So as long as he's not touching it, we should keep on bringing him down. So repeat until he's touching the line the following. We'll, uh, we'll change his Y by like negative 10 or something. Maybe a little faster, depending. So here's my program now. When the space key gets pressed, we're going to shoot the cat up in the air. So he immediately jumps high. And we're going to slowly bring him back down until he touches the line. Isn't that beautiful? So let's try this. Whee! There he goes. There he goes. Isn't that nice? That is... That is progress. So... I can have fun with this all day long, but I think you want me to move on. Uh, so that's jumping. We can do very similar things for going left and right. Okay, so not when space is pressed, but when, I don't know, the left arrow gets pressed. Let's just get ready for when the right arrow gets pressed, because it's going to be the same kind of problem. So when the left arrow gets pressed, let's move the scratch cat to the left. Yeah. So let's change his X by... Well, left is in the negative x direction. You see how it's going from negative 23 to like a bigger negative number. So left means change it by a negative value. Right means change it by a positive value. So let's see if 10 is good enough. So I'm going to click left and right. Whee, and you can hold it in and make him go. Maybe you want him to go faster. You can set it to like 20. So left and right. Hold it in. Left and right. And then space for jump. Isn't that fun? Okay, so that's the Scratch Cats program. I'm happy about that. And uh, I think all we need to worry about now is the fish. The fish and the game itself. So let's let's make it so that the Scratch Cat like has an objective. He wants to collect the fish, and he will gain points every time he touches the fish. So we're going to need a points variable. Let's handle that. Make a variable. Call it points. We can just always show it with this little check mark. Uh, and maybe when the game starts, I guess we'll start the game with the green flag, because why not? Uh, when the game starts, we can set the score to initially always be zero. So we can always work our way up from there. Uh, and then, yeah, every time we touch the fish, well, we should gain a point. So events, I don't know. As soon as the game starts, the, the fish should start seeing if he gets touched, maybe. Uh, so, forever, please, please, fish, keep checking if you have been touched. So, if the fish is currently touching the scratch cat, we should uh, increase points. Okay. The scratch cat wins a point when he touches a fish. All right, so let's see if this works. So I'm gonna click the green flag to start the program. Whee, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Well, the issue here is the scratch cat is touching this fish. Whee, for a little while while he's in the air. Okay, that is the problem. What needs to happen is Right as soon as he touches that fish, we need to hide that fish, okay? So that does not happen. Or at least move the fish out of the way. Uh, let's see if this does it. Yeah, that's better. He'll immediately hide and then you can't be touching it when it's invisible. Okay, it's still there, but it's invisible. So, okay, if we ever get touched, hide ourselves. Uh, and then we should uh, maybe make sure to always start out shown, hide ourselves when we get touched, and then we should teleport, okay? So the fish, let's have the fish disappear and teleport to a different location. So like, he was over here, now he goes, I don't know, over here next time, and then over here next time. So it's a game, all right? So, whenever we get touched, hide ourselves. After getting touched, hide, randomly teleport to a new x direction, x coordinate, 
and show ourselves it once more. Okay, so let's say, uh, let us set x to be a random number uh, between, okay, let's see where the x goes between. It's like negative uh, 500. Okay, so it's apparently negative 269 and, I don't know, 300 and 270. Negative 269 and, let's put it here, between negative 269 and positive 270. Okay, so that's what we want to put x to be between. So x should be a random number between those. And we actually have an operator that does that. Uh, pick random between 1 and 10. We'll just keep on picking a random number between 1 and 10. But we can pick a random number between negative 269 and 270. Yeah. And so then once we're in a new spot, let's wait a second and then show ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is it events? Yeah, there's wait. Wait a second and then show ourselves. So this is what happens whenever the fish gets touched. He starts out showing. So, uh, uh, he's way over there. Maybe we should be like, I don't know, negative 200 and positive 200 to make sure that never happens. Uh, so here we go. Let's start on x value being zero. Uh, okay. So if the fish ever touches the scratch cat, then the points get incremented, the fish hides. The fish gets a random new location for the x value, so it'll move along the, the line that he's currently on horizontally. And then we'll wait one second to show the fish in a new spot. Okay, hopefully you're following that. So now I can jump up, and if I miss the fish, nothing happens. But once I touch the fish, he goes away, hides himself, and comes back. And in a random spot, of course. And now the the points gets incremented each time. I hope you can see that as well. Okay, isn't that fun? So that is the game. And uh, you can click stop to stop the game and go to restart with points being zero. Whee. So that is, that's my fun underwater scratch cat adventure. I hope you enjoyed and that's where I want to leave you today. So what you're going to do is make your own version of this. Okay, that's going to be your programming assignment. So I'm going to give you this code as I normally do, but I want you to change it. Okay, I want you to make your own little uh, platformer game. So if you go to the modules, you click programming assignment two. Here's what I want you to do. All right, so uh, make a scratch program with the following features. So your character sprite, whatever you want it to be, will walk left and right. Uh, with the arrow keys and then jump with the space key and something cool should happen whenever you touch or jump into another sprite Okay, so you can use that uh, very useful touching block, okay? Oops, I want to be here and Yeah, so something cool should happen when you touch some other sprite and I want you to have at least two loops in your program Okay, that's a requirement at least two loops and you can use my demo as a starting point, but I don't, don't want you to copy it, of course. Your something cool should be unique, okay? So please be creative. I'm excited to see what you do. And for submission, I want you to, this time I'm going to require you to upload a video, okay? So I want you to upload a video of your program running with your code visible, uh, and you can record it however you want. You can use your phone with the Zoom screen re recording feature. You can use OBS, like I'm using. Uh, whatever you want. I can totally teach you how if you come to office hours or ask me on Discord, uh, but I want you to show me things happening, all right? So please just briefly explain your program, how it works as you demonstrate it. And it doesn't have to be long, just 30 seconds to a minute, something like, okay, here's my program. Uh, here are the different uh, parts of it. Like here's the program that happens when the scratch cat is running, the line has no program, the fish, here's hits program when the green flag is clicked. Here's how it's working, uh, and here's me playing my game. And this is like it's hitting well, when it's going. Oh, it's actually hitting this if statement inside of the forever loop, things like that. So I just want to hear you tell me that you understand all this stuff. That's the idea. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't have to be a long demonstration video. It could be 30 seconds uh, if you get everything in. 
30 seconds to a minute is perfectly fine. And yeah, I think that is that is all I want to tell you. So good luck with that. Please yell at me if you have any questions. And that is our lecture for the day. I'll give you all these programs again. Uh, hopefully you had as much fun as I did. So I will see you uh, in next week's lecture.